In this video, you'll see how to get started using our Blazor Grid layout. It allows you to arrange UI elements on a page, and it's based on a CSS grid layout. Layout items are organized into rows and columns. Let's look at how to add a grid layout to a project. I've already created a Blazor application that's configured to use DevExpress components. Now I add a DX grid layout to the page and create rows and columns. The rows collection will contain three rows and the columns collection will contain three columns. Now I define the items collection to create layout items. Add a DX grid layout item tag and use the template property to specify the item's content. I add more items in the same way. To customize item appearance, use CSS classes that are defined in the style section. Now I'll position the items within grid cells. To do this, use row and column indexes. You can use this approach if you need to create static layouts. To specify the row and column where the item should be located, I set the row and column item properties. Note that a single item can span multiple rows or columns. For example, this item will occupy three columns. I set the column span property. I specify the row and column indexes for other items in the same way. Okay, let's take a look at this in the browser. You can also change the row height and column width. To specify the row height, use the height property. This property accepts CSS units. You can specify a row's height in pixels or percentages, or set the property to auto, which means the item size will fit a content object. You can also use the FR unit. This unit is introduced by the CSS grid. The grid layout's rows whose height is specified with the FR unit are arranged last, since they occupy the remaining space. The space is divided between these items in proportion to the prefix number. To specify a column's width, I use the width property. It also accepts CSS units. Then I specify the layout's height and the distance between rows and columns. Now let's take a look at the changes. Okay, I'll demonstrate another way to position layout items using named areas. This approach is convenient when you need to create responsive layouts. I remove the row and column properties and assign an area name to each layout item. Then I place the areas in the rows. In the first row, the header area will occupy three cells. The second row will contain the right bar, content, and left bar areas. The third row will contain the footer. As you can see, we've created the same layout as before when we arranged items using column and row indexes. Now I'll demonstrate how to adapt this layout to extra small screens. You can use the DX layout breakpoint component to do this. I specify the screen size when the breakpoint should be activated. Then I create a Boolean X small screen data field, bind the breakpoint to it, and use this field to change the item's position. For extra small screens, there will be five rows. The items will be arranged vertically in a stack, and this is the layout for the other screen size. Also for extra small screens, there will be one column. For other sizes, three. Okay, let's take one last look. Here is my adaptive grid layout. When I change the screen size, the item's position changes. And that's it for this video. I hope you were able to get a good understanding of how to add our grid layout to your Blazor project. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you get notified anytime we release new Blazor content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.